Hi guys, my name is Philip and I'm a sports psychology consultant and welcome to my channel, Psycho Pass, Shoot, Score. So if you're new here, this is a channel where I look into three topics I absolutely love and that's sports, sports psychology and anime. So in this video today, what I'm going to be doing is reacting to a highly popular sports anime, one that's just started season four, it's been amazing over the years and that's Haiku. But before I really get into that, I want to just say a brief introduction as to what I really do as a sports psychology consultant. So what I do is work with athletes, work with teams and sometimes work with coaches in developing mental skills that they can use in training sessions as well as in competition to help them perform at a consistent high level, whether that's helping them improve their confidence, whether that's helping them in a team where it's communicating better and working together better as a team, I really give them different psychological techniques which can then help them physically perform a lot better. So, I'm going to start from episode one. Let's get into it. Man, that is some motivation. How can you not play in a tournament for three years and still be as pumped and excited as he is? Man, you can just tell from the get go, he loves this sport. That's crazy. Man, that's crazy. Just how they use that whole aspect of the fans as well as the reputation of that big school. And that, that really does play effect on the psychology of different athletes. And so a lot of times when I've worked with some teams and um, gone to these tournaments, I've definitely seen like this whole aspect of the fans like really cheering for one side or when there's a reputation for a big school coming and playing, whenever they come into the gym, like, everyone's always locked in and focused on them. And what that kind of does, it, it really does psych out a lot of teams before the match. And a lot of times you see this in other sports like UFC and boxing, um, where there's a lot of trash talking and then you can see when they get into the ring, like they really just don't want to be there. But it happens in every sport and you can clearly see it happens in volleyball as well, that whole like psychology side. And, what that really does and how I kind of perceive it is that when you're working with these athletes, they really need to be focused. That's a really big thing with all athletes in their performance, psychologically focusing on the task at hand. And when you start paying attention to the crowd noise, when you start paying attention to um, the reputation of the team, that really takes your focus left and right and not really centered towards your performance and what you should be focusing on and the techniques that you can do to hopefully come up with the win. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, they are terrified right now. <laughs> That's funny because uh, sometimes with these whole expectations you have for yourself mentally when you get into that situation you really start to feel nervous um, I'm sure some people have that similar experience it comes out in multiple ways it could be um, through wanting to throw up wanting to and it take a second to kind of relax um, but yeah I've definitely worked with a couple athletes and a couple teams where um, they've had one or two players who have kind of 
had this and how it's kind of perceived within sports psychology is that this whole aspect of being nervous really translates to being anxious and being high in anxiety. And I'm sure a lot of people have heard about anxiety and can relate it towards like social context of uh, wanting to go out with friends and stuff like that. But it's slightly different towards the sports context and the sports performance. So within sports anxiety, what it really does is kind of holds people back from executing techniques that they need to do to perform at a high level. But then in the game of sports, there's very few opportunities and they come within a split second. So you don't have a lot of time to start negatively thinking about these opportunities. And what anxiety really does is hold you back from quickly and effectively making a decision. So even though this is happening before the game, this can have a massive impact on them during the game. And so this is how it kind of comes out. No pun intended. <laughs> ビシッと言ってやるところだったんだけどね。一体何しにここへ来たの思い出作りとかか。勝ちに来たに決まってる。随分簡単に言うじゃねえか。確かに俺はでかくないけど。でも俺は飛べる。負けが決まってる勝負
So it's very unique how they really show that. They both have this whole never quit attitude and it it's the same concept, but it's shown in two different unique ways. One is shown in the side of they're dominating the match and they don't want to lose a single point. But then on the other side, the team who is <laughs> just losing like crazy, they perceive it, or that individual Hinata, he perceives it more as an enjoyment factor of he really wants to get this next point and the next point more of a positive, a fun-loving way. And that really draws in towards his teammates, really trying a lot harder. And so it kind of relates that never say die attitude, that never quit attitude. From a sports psychology point of view, it relates to being more solution focused rather than being more problem focused. So problem focus would be more focusing on the fact that you're losing or you're just dominating the match. So not everything really matters. However, when you're more solution focused and you're more optimistic and you more present that mentality of never quitting. What that does, it gives your brain more opportunities to find more solutions to the situations, whether that's changing a tactic or whether that's performing a certain technique a certain way. By having that mindset, it then gives your brain the better opportunity to then find those solutions. And that's what you can clearly kind of see. So yeah, it really shows that even though they both have that never die, never quit attitude, they show it from two unique angles. And that's why I really like Haiku. Like they talk about multiple different, and they discuss and show multiple different sports psychology topics, which I work with different clients and teams around. <laughs> そっちにはなんで<笑> Man, that was a great scene. Oh my goodness. I wish that stayed in. That was sick. Oh my goodness. ショウちゃん、怪我してない。目で追うだけで精一杯だった。well, that was a short career in middle school. <laughs> Man, that's so true. Because it really doesn't matter who your opponent is, whether they're highly ranked, highly respected, or if they're you've never heard of them and you're just it's the first round of a tournament. Like you ne you never know. And at the end of the day, it comes down to winning and losing. And that's why all these major upsets happen. And that's why sometimes the teams who are always dominating, they just stay dominating because they have that winner's mentality that regardless of who I'm playing against, we're gonna win. We're gonna do everything in our power to win and stay on in this tournament as long as possible. And once individually you have that mindset, that kind of sets you apart from the rest. But then once a whole team has that whole mindset, that then calls for a really special and dominant team. So he's really true what he's saying. Charinko de Hitoyama Koete Sanjipun. Kyokara, Miyagi Kenditz, Karasno Koto Gako. Sakabu, Hari Masenka, Yakub de Management of the day. Chita, Chita, Karasno. Korekai Pai Rensu Ste. Oh, <laughs> 
Eat it. <laughs> That's funny. The amount of passion he had, which just went away the second he saw his so-called rival. I don't know if you can call it a rivalry if they've only played one match and he got dominated, but when he saw... <laughs> He worked so hard to get there and was thinking, okay, next time around, I'm going to come around. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to stay on the court the longest. And then now he's your, he's your teammate. So there's a definitely a developing rivalry, but that ends today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Looking at sports animes from a different, unique sports psychology mindset and point of view. So make sure you like, make sure you subscribe for more content just like this. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.